That's a great day being in the house of the Lord, amen? Thank you, buddy. We'll talk about the app one a little bit. It wouldn't be Memorial Day weekend if I wasn't up here, right? Come on, those that have been here a while, you know. It just wouldn't be the same. All right, let's pray before we get into this. Father God, I just, uh, I come to you right now and I give you all the glory, all the praise, because you're truly worthy of it all, Father. We thank you for those that did pay the ultimate sacrifice that laid down their life willingly. They went to the call and they laid it down for each and every one of us so we could have freedom to worship here today, freedom in this country, Father God. We thank you for that. I pray for each and every family member, if there's one in here that had a loved one give their life, I thank you for their service. Father, just wash over them. Let your love wash over each and every one of them. Bring peace to them, Father. But you sent your son as the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom for eternity, freedom from death, freedom from the grave, freedom from hell, freedom from condemnation. I thank you that you sent your son to die on that cross for each and every one of us, Father. I thank you for that relationship, that fellowship that we can have with him. So Father, I pray that your words are heard today, not mine. Remove me, get me out of the way. You have your will, have your way. Let your words be heard, Father. Open our ears to hear what you have to say. Soften our hearts, Father. And I pray that if there's anybody in here that does not have a relationship with you or is not in fellowship with you, that after this, they will be there, Father. They will give their life to you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. And everybody says, amen, amen. That's what I want to start with today is relationship and fellowship. We need to determine what that is. We need to break that down so we kind of understand what we're going to talk about the rest of today. I've got about a two-hour message I'm going to put in about 30 minutes. So it's going to be getting fed with a fire hose today that we're going to talk about, all right? So are you ready? All right. So relationship. You see, I have three kids. I have a daughter and two sons. And that's what they are. They are my daughter and my sons. That's the relationship with me. It will never change. It started the moment that I knew I was going to have a child. That's when that relationship started. And nothing can change it. Nothing ever will change that. However, fellowship looks a lot different for each one of them, right? I can connect with Ethan talking about hockey. I can connect with Ethan talking about sports, about the book of Revelation. He could teach that better than I could, right? Like that's how I can connect and relate to him. Ryan, we can just sit and watch firefighting videos about house fires and car wrecks and learn about what firefighters do because that's what he wants to do. And that's what I did before I joined the military. So there's a history there. We can connect with that. We can play a farming game on on the uh, PlayStation. That's how we can fellowship and and spend time with each other and connect. Caitlin, there's multiple ways I can connect with Caitlin. Throughout the years, it's changed, right? We could go fishing. I can make bee bracelets with her. Um, We could just go to the gun range and and shoot, which she's a really good shot, so watch out. All right, boys, be careful. But that's going to change with her because, I'm not going to cry, but she's graduated, right? She's moving on. She's going to college. So that, f- <laughs> that fellowship is going to look different. It's going to change. It's not going to be the same as 18 years of having her in the house and eating meals with her and sewing into her and doing all these things, which in the natural, that's okay. Fellowship can change that way. That means we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. We're raising them up. The Holy Spirit's in her right? I cannot be the Holy Spirit. So that fellowship in the natural can change, but that relationship will never, ever change no matter where she goes, no matter how far she goes away, no matter where she is, she is always my daughter, right? It's the same way with God the Father. Our relationship with Him never changes. If you are a child of God, a son or daughter, the moment that you gave your life to Him, you began and you received Christ. You are that relationship, that son or daughter, and it cannot be hindered. It cannot be changed. That is what you are. However, that fellowship can be different. But that fellowship started that same moment you gave your life to him, but it can be hindered. It can change. You play a part in that. And it's this connection aspect that can change throughout the time. But it shouldn't. You should always be in fellowship with the Father. Every day, every hour, every minute, you should be in fellowship. 
However, not all of us that have given our life to Christ are experiencing that fellowship, that friendship, that walk, that closeness, that connection. It's because we're putting our own wants, our own desires, our own ambitions in front of His. We're spending hours on countless things, myself included, that will do nothing and have zero impact on the life ahead. That's where we're focusing all of our times, on our own selfish motives. And that's what sin is. It's literally doing what we want instead of what God wants for us to do in our actions, our attitudes, and everything that we do. We've been talking about seeking the face of God, seeking His face, going after Him. Let me read you something that was in my reading this week that I don't say all Christians, but some are doing this, and it's scary. In Jeremiah, we find this. So now speak to the men of Judah and against the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, This is what the Lord says. Behold, I am forming a disaster against you, devising a plan against you. Now turn back, each of you from his evil way, correct your ways and your deeds, but they will say it's hopeless, for we are going to follow our own plans, and each of us will persist in the stubbornness of our own evil heart. This is what he says in 17. Like an east wind, I will scatter them before the enemy. I will show them my back and not my face in the day of their disaster. I will show them my back and not my face. If we want fellowship, if we want to connect with him, if we want to spend time with him, we need to turn away from all of our evil desires, all of our own wants. We need to lay it all down, pick up our cross, follow him. Right? We need to die to self and follow him and put what he wants for each and every one of us. And that's what the series is about. It's the intimate pursuit. It's chasing after him and him alone. Pastor's been talking about spending time in the secret place, having this friendship with God. And today we're going to talk about how do you connect with God? How do you personally connect with him? How do you personally have this friendship with him? Now I know there's only one path to God, right? And that's through what? It's the standard church answer, right? Jesus, but it's true. It's the only way is through Jesus, but there's multiple ways to connect with him. And that's what I'm going to show you today. And here we believe there's 12 different ways that you connect. We're going to take this 30,000 foot, maybe 100,000 foot level of all of these 12 and talk about them. All right. And we're going to see which one is the one that you connect with him most. The transitions between these are going to be abrupt. So follow along, pay attention. Okay. After the service, I'm going to have a QR code up on the screen, and it's going to send you to journeychurch.org slash encounter. On there, you're going to find an assessment. That assessment is going to lead you down this path of finding which one of these is yours that you connect with. Today, you may hear from the Lord saying, this is it. This is what speaks to me right here. This is literally me. But I still encourage you, go to that website. There's so many more resources there. There's so many more scriptures there that I can share. So many suggested actions, books to read. There's so much more on each and every one of those on that site. You need to go there and look at that. Amen? All right? All right. So let me explain this. These 12, there's one that you're going to be the most in, but that doesn't mean you ignore the rest. That doesn't mean you just... If fasting's the one that is yours, that doesn't mean the only thing you do is fast and that's alone. You should be doing each and every one of these in your walk with Christ. All right? I'm going to show you something at the end that every single day you can experience every single one of these talk, that we talk about. There's just this one or two that propels you into this next level. Think about it like this. There's five love languages, Right? You've got words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. Husbands, if your wife is acts of service and all you do is buy her gifts and spend every waking hour with her, right? You're not connecting with you. You're not filling up that love tank aspect. All she wants you to do is call her on the way home and say, what is it that you need? You need me to stop at the store and get you something? Hey, I'm going to take care of the the dishes today. I'm going to cook tonight. I'm going to do this or I'm going to do this, right? But that doesn't mean you don't do the rest of it. That doesn't mean you ignore everything else. 
you still have words of affirmation. You still have the acts of service, the receiving gifts, right? The physical touch and the quality time. There's just this one that you guys connect on the most. Does that make sense? That's what we're talking about today. So in alphabetical order of no importance, here we go. Number one, adoration, which is worship. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised, not you being praised, right? You feel the closest to God when you're ministering to his heart through worship. You see, when you get into worship, everything else disappears. All the people disappear, the wrong lyrics on the screen disappear, the smoke, the lights, the atmosphere, the people moving, the, the baby crying, whatever it is that's going on, the word, anything disappears because your eyes are fixated on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he just begins to minister to you as you minister to him. What does this look like? It's you going to grab a cup of, cup of coffee, fill that thing to the brim where if you move the wrong way, it falls and it spills all over you, and focus on that during worship. And when I come and ask you, did you see the lights mess up? Did you see the words mess up? Did you see the lights didn't change? They were off, or this person did this, or that person got up, you're like, no, I just didn't want to burn myself. I was fixated on that cup of coffee and that alone. That's what adoration is. That's what happens if adoration is your thing. You fixate on him and nothing else. You see, it's not this feeling of a response that's in you. It's just worshiping him because he's worthy to be worshiped. You see, Revelation 4 says this, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Worthy are you, our Lord, our God, to receive glory, honor, and power, for you created all things, and because of your will, they existed and were created. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter if you can sing well or not. It doesn't matter if you can play an instrument. It doesn't matter anything. You're just worshiping the King of Kings. Let me give you an example, and I'm going to give you a lot of examples from my accident and spending time in Tampa, because he spoke a lot through that season. When I was in Tampa, I spent a year down there. Month three, month four, I was sick and tired of being in the hospital. I was sick and tired of waking up in cold sweats. I was sick and tired of having nightmares. I wanted everything to be, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was done. I was done with it and I didn't want anything else. I just wanted to be normal again and back to life. That's when music kind of got introduced to me with the keyboard that was brought into my room because they have now music and art therapy which I didn't know I needed, but I needed. And they brought this piano keyboard into my room. And I just literally would get up in the middle of the night. It didn't matter if it was one, two, three o'clock in the morning. It didn't matter, right? And I just started playing Revelation song on the keyboard. Four chords, super, super easy. Wasn't trying to be fancy. Just playing four chords to Revelation song. And just started going, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. With all creation, I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are worthy of everything, and I will adore you. Caitlin, I didn't sing it for you. But I just sat there singing, and everything disappeared. No more worry, no more anxiety, no more nothing. That's adoration. That's what adoration is. And he can do that for you, and if that's yours, that's what it looks like for you. He's worthy to be praised. Number two today, compassion. Your value is not what you do, but who you do it for. You see, you feel the closest to God when you're ministering to the least of these because you're serving to serve Jesus. You're not serving for yourself. You're not trying to get anything out of it. And when you're serving, he's ministering to you in that. And you're hearing and you're talking with him throughout this process. Matthew 25 He's separating the sheep and the goats at the end. And he tells them, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I needed clothes, you clothed me. Right? He's telling them all this. When I was in prison, you came and visited me. He's telling them these things. And they're like, when, when, Lord, when did we do this for you? And he said, when you did it for the least of these, you did it for me. You see, you have this unique awareness to see what others need before anybody else ever sees what it is that they need. But you've got to remember, it's not your responsibility to take on the weight of the world, to take on all that for yourself. Your responsibility is to love them and let them see Jesus through you. 
It's not to take on all that work. Jesus does the heavy lifting, amen? But you need to take time to receive from the Holy Spirit. You need to take time to fill yourself up. Because if you keep pouring out, you're going to be empty. And I don't know about you, but you can't pour anything out of an empty cup. And you can't give away anything that you don't have to give away. You've got to continue to be filling yourself up. And always remember who you're doing it for. And if this is yours, you already know who you're doing it for. Number three today, conversation. You're hearing what he has to say. All right? It's easy to hear God when you're in his presence, isn't it? It's easy to hear from him. Matthew 7 says, ask, it'll be given to you. Seek, you will find. Knock, it'll be opened to you. Daily conversations is this foundation for you. This is what starts it all off. In the morning, you're waking up in conversation with him. And I encourage you, don't say amen until you go to bed at night. This is that conversation that you have daily. When I think of conversation, I think of a movie called War Room. And the lady's just talking to God throughout the day, every single moment of the day. She's having this conversation. Right? You ask the questions, but you don't question his motives or who he is. You're not like Job, right, where you're just questioning, 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 and then God's like, all right, tighten your belt. It's my turn to ask you the questions now. Where were you when, the, when I laid the foundations? You're asking for understanding. You're asking for wisdom, as James talks about when there's trials, right? He's telling you to count it joy, but he's saying if you don't have understanding, seek wisdom in that. You're seeking wisdom. It's the question is to gain understanding. Lord, show me. I don't understand, but your ways are so much better than mine. Please give me understanding. Remember, though, communication, conversation is a two-way street. Right? You're not just always talking, 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 and not stopping to listen to what he has to say. And when he speaks to you, the spirit and the word always agree. <laughs> I knew I'd get an Amen. The Spirit and the Word always agree. So you need to be in the Word. You can't just have conversations, just talking. You need to be in the Word as well and taking what you hear and make sure it lines up with the Word. Because if it doesn't, either you're getting in the way with your own mind or the enemy's trying to get in there to put something else in. So the Spirit and the Word always agree. Number four is creation. You look for God in everything and you see him, right? In everything around, you see God. Romans 1.20, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived, being understood by what has been made, so that they are without excuse. You see, you feel there's no better place to be than in the sanctuary that he made, which is nature. Right? You see his attributes. You see his power in nature. He speaks to you when you're out in nature. Your fellowship from God continues to grow when you're out there. When you see the birds, the trees, the ocean, if you go to the mountains, the sun, when anything, people, anything there is, you see it. And you need to be intentional, if this is yours, on seeing what's in front of you. Paying attention to what's exactly in front of you. There's a story that I have with this where he spoke to me through creation during a hurricane, actually. Well, I say hurricane, it was a windstorm. But the pine trees behind my house were just blowing like crazy all over the place, right? They just, they're just blowing around. And he said, look, the higher you get away from the root, the higher you get away from Jesus, the tops are just blown around by everything of doctrine, every type of doctrine. It's just floating around, moving around, tossed around to and fro. But as you get closer to the root, as you get closer to Jesus, as you get rooted in who he is, there's no movement. It's solid in the foundation. It's solid in the doctrine of what he is. And I was like, oh my goodness gracious. If you just take time to sit and listen and look at creation, he can speak to you through it. Amen? Expression. That's where this guy comes in. All right, expression is our fifth one. See, you feel the closest to God when you get to create. When you get to make stuff, whether it's through music, um, through writing, through drawing, through art, through dancing, through editing stuff on the internet, through whatever it is that you're creating, that's where God speaks to you. That's where he talks to you through creating something. And those who connect this way, right, they get this, 
they, they get to experience God through this creativity and encounter him through it. But what's even more special is that they get to bring other people along in this aspect because of what they created. They get to share with them what they created. And that's where this is. So in Tampa, like I said, the arts program came in. Before my accident, I would annoy my wife with uh, glass blowing videos. Like I would show her these glass videos and she'd be like, whatever, it's, it's really cool. I'm glad you're excited for it, right? So I got to go down there. I don't say that in a mean way. It's just, it wasn't her thing. So I got to go down there and do glass blowing and I would spend hours at a shop being able to do stuff. And they're like, hey, let's make a paperweight. So this was supposed to be a clear paperweight and it fell on the ground right and I picked it up well not like barehanded because it's like 3,000 degrees we pick it up right and I'm like that looks like an apple we put a stem on it we take it back to the um, to the hospital the next or uh, after it gets done cooling and stuff I take it back and I didn't think anything about the apple until until someone said hey why did you create an apple and immediately the Lord said look at this apple it's completely perfect on the outside it's completely whole there's not a bite like in the garden right? This thing's completely whole. You're perfect. You're blameless. I still see you the same way. You're exactly the same. You are perfectly whole and blameless. However, when you get close, there's all these imperfections inside here. There's all these little bubbles that he still has to work out, which means on this earth, I'm not perfect, right? I still got stuff I'm working on, but he sees me completely 100% whole. Remember, when you're creating something, it's for God and not for man. You're creating it for God to honor him and point people towards him and him alone. This is where it came in where they said, hey, you could sell this for a lot of money with that story. And I'm like, no, I want to keep it to share the story with lots and lots of people so I can point them to God and not to myself. This is what it's about. You get to share it with other people. That's expression. That's creation. All right? Or uh, that's creating. Amen? Number six, fasting. It's just a diet without prayer. You're literally just dieting if that's all you're doing is just staying away from food. If you're not digging in and encountering the Lord daily throughout the fast or whatever it is, that's, it's, it's useless. So you feel the closest when you deny your flesh and you feed your spirit. That's when you feel the closest to God. He talks to you. He starts ministering you through there. Remember, as you're withholding from food, you need to fill yourself up with the word. You need to continue to fill yourself up in the spirit. See, it's not a fast unless you lead you in these daily encounters with the Lord. Like I said, it's just a diet. Jesus was tempted when he was fasting, right? And how did he defeat Satan? With the word. The word alone is how he defeated him. So you need to be prayed up. You need to be soaking in the word. You need to spend time with him as you're denying the flesh, building yourself up in the spirit. All right? Number seven. We're halfway there. Learning. You know what you believe and why you believe it. See, you're not content with these standard answers. You're not content with this, this little soft answers. You have so many questions, right? And you want them answered. And you're not going to stop asking the questions or digging in until so you get a resolve in your spirit. And you're just going to chase through the Bible looking for these answers because you're a learner. And you just want to learn. And that's how you encounter him. And that's how he speaks to you. And you need to understand, like, I believe this, but why do I believe this? I don't believe this because Pastor Mike said or... Pastor Adam said this, or this person said this. I need to know why I believe it. Why do I believe what I believe? Your prayer is always, God, teach me. Teach me, teach me, teach me. So you need to lean into this so you can truly know the Lord. And I don't just mean no. I grew up in Chicago in the 90s. I loved basketball, and Michael Jordan was the man. He still is the man, right? So Michael Jordan, I knew everything about Jordan. But I did not know Jordan, right? There's a difference about knowing and knowing who he is. you got to build that relationship. If you just read the word for knowledge and understanding of it, it's useless. It's garbage if you don't put it into practice and truly know who the Father is. And don't just read for a Bible plan just to learn. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. Let him minister to you. He is the best teacher 
that there is. And he will speak to you every single time you sit down. You just have to listen. Number eight, meditation. Day and night. You see, this is intentionally focusing on God. Directing that focus on him. Letting him saturate yourself in his presence and meditating on his word. You see, this is not what we just talked about with learning. This isn't this um, learning, studying the Bible, preparing for a teach or a message or anything like that. That's not what this is about. This is literally a devotional reading of scripture with the ultimate goal of drawing closer to God, closer to Jesus. They're both it's super important, but there's a distinction between sitting down to try and learn and study as just sitting there and letting the words wash over you and what it is. Just with everything though, with worship, with prayer, with whatever it is that you're doing, right? If you don't have the right heart behind it, it's going to be useless. It's going to be absolutely useless for you. Listen to what David says in the Psalm. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your accomplishments. I reflect on the work of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul longs for you like weary land. See, the basic orientation of David's heart here is one of thirst for God, and that's what yours is. If this is yours, you just have a thirst for him, a strong desire for communion with God through his words. That should be true for each and every one of us. And if it isn't, I encourage you to dig into that. Number nine, movement. You get up and move, right? Movement's your thing, whether it's going for a run, a jog, a wheel around, whatever it is. It's okay, you can laugh. Whatever it is, it's a movement gets you. The movement is what it is. If you become aware of his presence as you move, whatever that may look like, it may just be getting up and moving in a different spot, shifting positions in worship. Whatever that is, movement is the way. But it's important for you to discern the difference between movement for God and just staying busy. Right? You got to determine, you got to know the difference between it. You see, husbands and wives can talk while doing dishes, but they need to set time apart to be together, to go on dates, to hang out, to truly connect with each other. There's a difference of being busy and being intentional. You got to make sure you set time aside in the pursuit to connect with God. And don't make it a routine. Listen to the Holy Spirit. What do you want to show me? Where do you want me to move? What do you want me to do? What action is it? Number 10, reformation. I love this. Pray before you slay. Pray before you slay. All right? One of the ways you connect is partnering with him. What burdens your heart or what burdens his heart burdens yours. You go against the grain of culture, right? You're literally going against what the world has to say. But he's changing you first. He's reforming you first. He's ministering to you first. He's changing and transforming you first which means you have to be in prayer, you gotta be in his word, you gotta be connected to him first and foremost. It's all about him, his timing, what you want him to say, when you want him to say it, or when he wants you to say it, and how he wants you to say it. Which means you gotta be prayed up before you slay. Before you go out there trying to cause a ruckus, make sure you're connected with him. Because if you're not, you're gonna fail, right? You're trying to go out there alone and unafraid. You need to be connected. Pray before you slay. Remembrance, looking back to see how God has moved in your life. When you remember what he's done, you feel the closest to, Lord, to the Lord that you can. You encounter the Holy Spirit when you remember his faithfulness. But it's not about being stuck in the past, right? It's not about being stuck back there and continuing to live in the past. It's this invitation to recall what God has done for you. Another story from Tampa here. I was supposed to get an IBC filter taken out. They couldn't take it out because I got deathly sick, 24-hour antibiotics. They canceled the surgery. I am mad like Job is, and I am yelling at God. Right? I am so upset. Why is this happening? Why can't you just let something go right? Why are you doing this to me? God was so gracious to not just say tighten your belt, but he showed me in a very nice way of what he was doing. And he did it for a reason. Because he could have just canceled the surgery. Why do you have to make me sick? Right? But this is the reason why. So I, a couple weeks after the surgery was canceled, and I'm all better now, I go to have 
a conversation with a doc who's supposed to put my belly back together because I had to cut it all open when I got ran over. And the doc goes, is there anything else you need to do? I said, yeah, they got to take this filter out. She said, do not let them take that filter out. Immediately, I was like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry for yelling at you. I'm sorry for doubting you. I'm sorry for questioning all of your motives. She said, don't let them take it out because if you throw a blood clot, that's going to save your life during this surgery. So he showed me this. This is the reason why. Even in the midst of any trouble, what you may think is the worst case scenario, he's still in control. He's still in control. He has it, right? We just need to look for him and stop paying attention to everything else that's bad or going on. We've got to have the vertical focus, not the horizontal focus. Amen? That's what remembrance is. Solitude, the last one. You feel seen, heard, and safe, which is completely opposite of the natural, right? If you're alone, do you feel seen, heard, and safe? If you're out there all alone, that's pretty opposite of what you would think of. But truly, solitude for you is you're being, you're being seen, you're being heard, and you're safe because you're with the Father. And you have this time, this desire to be with Him, to get alone with Him. But it's not just getting alone, sitting there in silence and just sitting there. It's not about that. It's about listening to what He has to say. There's no greater intimacy than getting alone with God. And that's what we talk about with the secret place. So we talk about getting alone with him. Find that spot, whatever it is. I know people have a parking spot that they go to or they got this that they go to. Whatever that is, the solitude to get alone with him. See, I pray today that one of these spoke to you. One of these areas that I talked about spoke to you somehow, some way. And I pray at the end when we put up the QR code, you go and learn more about this because that was the quickest I could have went through this because of timing aspect and stuff, right? We just don't have the time. Each one of these could spend an hour talking about. There's so many resources and stuff at that site, so go there and dig in, take the assessment. Um, let me tell you a scenario real quick. Remember how I said one of these is your most important, but you're gonna use every single one of them in your day. Let me read something here for you that I wrote out. You wake up in the morning, and you say, thank you for the air in my lungs. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for another day that I get to share your word. I get to go witness to other people. Thank you, Lord. Lead me in every area. You just started with conversation with the Lord. Your conversation started. For me, I slide out into my wheelchair. For you, you get to walk to wherever you're going, right? But in either way, I say, thank you, Lord, for whoever made the wheelchair. Because every good gift is from above. And I thank you for that wheelchair. I thank you that I'm able to move. I thank you for this creation. There's movement. There's expression in my life. I make my way to the study in my house. And I have this glass door in the front. And the sun shines through. And I see the sun shining right through there, right? Shining through the doorway. I hear the birds chirping. We have this whipper world that just goes crazy at 6 o'clock in the morning. But I remember, and I remember, Lord, that you even feed them. You even clothe the lilies. And I remember the scripture that I hear about that, that you're going to provide for me even more. There's creation. There's remembrance. As I begin to read your word, it washes over me. I hear you speak directly to me. And as I dig in a little more, you show me so much more as I dig and I follow and I go down the rabbit hole. That's meditation. It's learning. Now, as I get in the car and I head to the store, worship music starts to play. And it's all about worshiping him. It's not this eye-centered worship. It's about worshiping him and for who he is and for what he does and praise him for that. And then the traffic worries go away, right? I start praying for each and every person, praying for the one that I see along the side of the road, right? Especially for them. Then I go in and I, you know, I get something extra and I, I give it to them that's along the side of the road or I speak to them or I tell them I have a place for them to go. Whatever it is, there's adoration, there's compassion. As I go throughout the day, I'm like, I don't need to eat today. I don't need to eat this meal today. I'm going to take time just to dig into your word. I'm going to take time just to spend with you. I don't need this meal right now. 
and you, and you go off to this secluded area, no distractions, nothing, and you allow him to speak to you. And you say, speak up, I'm listening, right? And he says, fight for those that can't fight. Right? Fight for them. Speak for the ones that can't speak. You've just gone through solitude and fasting, reformation. That's literally every single one of those in a day that you can do. What I'm saying is one of these is going to be the one that literally propels you to the next level of every single aspect of it. This is an everyday life if we decide to focus on him. If we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, we will encounter the Lord in every single area of our life if we just focus on Him. We cannot just do one of these and call it a day. We need every single one of these. You see, you may be sitting here going, I don't, I don't know which one of these, you know, or I'm having such a tough time reading the Word. I want to read the Word. I want to sit there and read the Word. I just have a tough time reading it. It's because you're sitting in your living room with the TV on trying to read the word or the kids are running around when really creation is how you connect take the word outside take your bible and sit outside look at the trees look at the birds read the word when you're reading the word try and envision what it was like where that's being taken place at is there mountains around was this going on was this there try and envision what that creation would look like it's just you're trying to do it in the wrong way and that's why it's being hindered you're connecting in the wrong aspect and like I always say, if you want to hear from God, just read the Word. If you want to hear Him out loud, read it out loud. He will speak to you. He truly, truly will speak to you. And as we close, I want you all to stand. This is the most important part of today right here. If you're in here today, and as I talked about relationship, and you don't have a relationship... If the prayer team would come forward, there's also going to be somebody over here at this door over on this side. And over there is for those that don't have a relationship with the Lord. You see, this is the most important thing to understand. Relationship is the priority and the first thing you need to have. Before any of this fellowship, these 12 things I talked about, you can't do these things and try and earn your way in. You've got to have a relationship with the Lord. And if you don't have a relationship with the Lord, this is what Romans 10 says. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There's nothing else you have to do. These 12 will come after. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 tells me, for it is by grace through faith that I have been saved. Not of my own undo of doing, Nothing I did, no works that I did, so that no one may boast. Verse 10 then tells me, if we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. You're called to do the good works afterwards. That's where this fellowship comes in. That's where all this works comes in is afterwards. So with every head bowed, if you're in here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you want a relationship with Jesus, you want to surrender your life to him, now's the time to raise your hand so I know who I'm praying with. I see that hand in the back. Anybody else? 